right, so there's three ways that your book is going to teach you how to do subtraction. Now, these are just methods or suggestions on how to do it. There will be questions on each of the methods, obviously, that we're going to want you to show those. But just getting the correct answer can be done in using any of these. The first way is, of course, by place value, where we did our expanded form, just like on addition. We did expanded form to get addition. We can do expanded form to get subtraction. You just have to remember when you are moving from one place on your place value chart to the next that you're always carrying 10 across. So if you're going from one's place to 10's place, you're gonna to need to take 10 with you. If you're going from 10's place to 100's place, you're gonna to need to carry 10 with you. It's always 10 as you move on your place value chart. The second method that we're gonna go over is called the add-on method. Now I have found that students who struggle are um, third graders or anybody, even older kids that I have tutored, when they are struggling with the borrowing step of subtraction, the add-on method really makes more sense for them and is helpful and they're still going to get the correct answer. So I'm going to show you that method and then of course we're going to do the regular, what I call old school subtraction with borrowing regrouping, which I know you've learned because uh, that's the way that you have been doing it. Um, from the examples I've seen. So this is the first page in my interactive notebook under subtraction. So you have these four problems. It's on a little foldable. So when you glue it, you should be able to lift it up and down so that you can work the problem underneath and then go back and repractice it. So I'm gonna start first on this one, on this first page, and we're gonna do Let's do the first two problems. We're gonna do the first two problems as place value subtraction. So just like we did on addition, we're gonna break this number apart by place value. So we have 400, three tens, and nine ones. So we're gonna write that. 400, three tens, nine ones. And we're gonna take away from that 300, and 385, so that's three hundreds, 80, and five. So that's how we're gonna set it up, just like we did with addition and place value strategy. But this time we're subtracting. So one thing that I want us to do different than probably what we were taught in second grade is I want us to start looking at our numbers from our hundreds place. So in the hundreds place, we have 400, 300. We know that's fine because we have more at the top. So we're gonna leave our hundreds alone for right now. Then I wanna to move to my tens place. Now remember, we have to cross our place value chart. And I told you when you cross your place value chart, you have to carry 10. So in the tens place, we have only 30 on top and 80 on bottom. 30 cannot be subtracted. We can't subtract an 80 when if I only have 30. There's more on the floor, so we gotta go next door. So we're gonna go back to our hundreds place, and we're gonna take away one whole hundred. Now, what I want third graders to understand is, like on the old school method, they'd mark out four and put three on top. But what you're really doing is you're taking one of those hundreds and you're carrying that 100 across into the tens place. So this is no longer 30. This is now going to be 130. That's where that 100's going. We're just moving it to the next place. It takes 10 tens to make 100. So now I have 13 tens. 130. We just carried 100 across. So now my tens place now has more on top. So we can subtract, go ahead and check on our ones. We have more on top again, so we can subtract. So we're gonna start now by subtracting. Everybody's fixed. We have the larger numbers on top. Nine minus five is four. So that's four ones. 130, take away 80. Well, zero minus zero is zero. 13 minus eight is five, so that's 50. 
and then 300 minus 300, we know that's going to cancel out, so I will not have any hundreds. If you need to put a zero there, you can. I'm going to leave mine blank, so I see that I have 50 and 4. I'm going to stick a plus sign. I don't want y'all to think that's 504 because it's not. It's 50 and 4, and 50 and 4 together make 54. So the difference between 400 39 and 385, I mean, 385, yeah, is 54, okay? I'm going to do another one with the place value. So this one, we have 734, so I'm going to expand that, expand the form. 700 plus 30 plus 4, there's my expanded form. The second number is 281, I'm going to expand that. 200 plus 80 plus 1, okay? And now we are subtracting. My plus signs kind of make my um, separation between my place value chart. We have ones, tens, and hundreds. Looking at my hundreds place, 700 is more than 200, so we're good there. 30 is not more than 80. So again, I'm going to need to take a whole entire hundred. So I'm going to move one of these hundreds with my 30. So that's why I'm going to have 130. There's the hundred I just carried across. Four minus one is fine. So we're going to now subtract. Four take away one is three. So three is in the ones place. 130 minus 80. We did that while ago. That's still 50. Tens place. And then 600 minus 200 is 400. There's my hundreds place. So now we need to put our expanded form back together. 453 is 453. And there's my answer to 734 minus 281 is 453. So that's two examples that you can see on using place value strategies for subtraction. Okay, now let's go down to the bottom where I want to do some add-on examples. So on the two at the bottom, we're going to do the add-on method, which means you're not really subtracting you're adding every time to get your answer. So if you're really good at addition, this may be the way you want to do subtraction from now on, by adding. So when you're doing the add-on method, you wanna start with the smallest number. So our smallest number is 636. So I'm gonna go and write that down. We're adding on 600. And 36, we're going to start with the smallest number, the number on bottom. Now, our goal is to get this number to 842. When we're finished, we want this number to change into 842. That's what we want to get. So, we're trying to get to 842. We're trying to find out what can I add to 636 to turn it in to 842. Okay, that's our what we're trying to do. So I'm already at 36, right? So the first thing I want to do is to make 10. 10s are easy to count by. So how can I make a 10 out of 36? Simple, I can add four to it, right? If I add four to this number, six plus four gives me that 10, and then I end up with 640. That's great, okay? So I've already achieved getting to the 40. You can see I already have my tens place. Just by adding to get to the next 10, I have achieved my tens place. Now, I want to change and get my 100 to match, okay? If this is 640, how many hundreds do I need to get from 600 
to 800. If I want to change this to 840, all I would need to do is to add 200 to it, and this would turn it into 840. So we got to our nearest 10, and then we're fixing our hundreds. The only thing I'm missing now is the ones place. I got my tens place by adding four. I've gotten my hundreds place by adding 200. Now, I'm going to circle what we added. You'll see why in a minute. Because remember, we're adding them. Now, what do I need to add so that I can get my ones place? All I need to add now is a two. And I'll turn 840 into 842, which is what I want. That's the number I want, and we're finished, okay? So once again, we added four to get to our next 10. We added 200 to get to our 800. Then we just needed to add two more to get to our 842. Now to figure out my subtraction answer, I'm just gonna look at what was added. Remember, I added four, I added 200, and I added two. So if I put everything I added together, four, 200, two, I know that I had added 200, zero tens, and six ones. So I know the answer is 206. The smallest number is 206 away from being that largest number. There's your answer, 206. Okay, I'm gonna do the add on method one more time on this last problem. And then you'll see more practice. I did another video for you on Google Classroom using your math book with more practice on adding on. So remember, when you add on, we're going to start with the smaller number. So the smaller number is 214. That's my starting point. I'm going to stop when I get to 628 because that's my largest number. I'm trying to figure out how far away these numbers are. So I'm going to add to my 214 until it turns into 628. I'm just going to keep adding on to it until I get 628. Now, could you add on differently than me? Absolutely you can. The way I'm doing is how I can easily do it mentally by using, you know, getting to a 10 and hundreds, changing those that I can count up quickly in my head. So first I'm going to get to a 10. I like those zeros. Zeros are easy to add. So the only way I can turn this four into the next 10 is by adding six. If I add six to a four, it turns into 10, right? So that gets me to 220. So I just added six. I'm going to circle that. That gave me to 220. Now let's go ahead. I've got my 20. I need to now get this 100. I'm at 200. I want 600. 200 to 600, if I count it up from 200 to 600, it would take me four hundreds to turn a two into a six. So we're going to add 400 to it, and now I'm at 620. The only thing left to do now is to get my ones back. I need eight ones, so I'm going to add eight. I'm circling what I'm adding, and that's going to give me the 628, which is what I want. So what all did I add? Everything I circled is what I added on. I added six, I added 400, and I added eight. So I've added... 414. So the answer to 628 minus 412 would be 414. That's adding on. So, so far you've seen two options. You've seen place value, strategy, subtraction, 
and you've seen adding on, subtraction. Now you had a second page that looked exactly the same, same exact problems. On this page, what we're gonna do is what I call the old school subtraction, which is how you were taught, I was taught, our grandparents were taught. This is how subtraction, this was the only way. But this doesn't work for every student. So that's why we're gonna show you those other strategies as well. And I'm, my marker kind of bled through, so I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go to a different sheet of paper. Because I, I want you to build this thing. Now, the biggest issues we have with old school way is regrouping. It just becomes a disaster sometimes. And if we don't regroup correctly, we're not gonna get the correct answer. So you're gonna put this under your tab. Mine bled through because I'm using a Sharpie pen. So I'm gonna redo mine on another separate sheet of paper, okay? So I'm just rewriting the problem, 628 minus 214. Now, when we're doing the old school way, we still have to think about this is place value. These numbers are lined up according to their place value. One's place, tens place, hundreds place. You can't change that, okay? I still want you to start looking in the hundreds place. Six is bigger than two, so hundreds is okay. Two is bigger than one, tens is okay. Eight is bigger than four, eight's okay. So since my, every number on top, every digit, every place on top is bigger than the digit underneath, we'd have no regrouping that needs to be done. This is one I would not do as a different strategy. I would do regular old school subtraction since there's no regrouping. 8 minus 4 is 4, 2 minus 1 is 1, 6 minus 2 is 4, there's the answer. Now, if you wanted to go back and check, now we did this same problem all ago, but we did it with adding on. And look, we got the same answer. So adding on does work. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one I have is 842 minus 636, okay? Same thing, I want you to start looking in the hundreds place. We're gonna fix our numbers before we ever subtract. There's a reason for that. 800, 600, 800 is bigger, hundreds place is good. 40 over 30, four is bigger, that's good. But look in my ones place. Two is not okay, two is not enough. So we're gonna borrow. You borrow from the, you don't go all the way across your place value chart to borrow. You only have to borrow from the one place above you. So if I'm in the ones place, I'm going to regroup from the tens. So this four, which is really 40, remember, because we're in the tens place. This four is now 30 or three, and I'm removing one 10. Now that 10 doesn't disappear. That 10 is being carried across to the ones place. That's why the two is now turned into 12 because I just put a 10 with the two. Sometimes third graders get in their head, all they gotta do is stick a one in front of it. That's not what that means. When you're borrowing and regrouping in subtraction, you're not putting a one in front of it. You are adding 10 ones to your ones place. 10 and two give you your 12. Now on the top, all the numbers are large enough so we can subtract. 12 minus six is six. Three take away three is zero and eight take away six is two. So we get 206. On the other side, we did this problem as an add-on strategy, and look right there. We still got 206, so add-on does work. All right, the last two, which we did as place value strategy, we're gonna do those again. So the next one I have, and yours may not be in my order, and that really doesn't matter as long as you're working them out. 734 minus 281, okay. Let's start checking our numbers. Seven is larger than two, so our hundreds place is fine. Tens place, three is not larger than eight, so 30 is not okay to take 80 away. So since we're in the tens place, we're going to the hundreds place. We're gonna take one of our hundreds. When you bring that hundred across, 
this three is turning into 130. Okay, now I put that zero because I want you to understand that, but you're not going to really put zero. You're just going to have 13 up there. But I don't want you to think that that's 13. That's 130 because you're in the tens place. We carried 100 across. Now look at your ones. Ones are fine. We have four and one. We can take that away, and that's three. 13 minus eight is five or 50, and six minus two is four. So 453. Now we did this problem earlier as um, place value strategy. So let's check. Oh, let's check and see what we got. Here it was, and look at there. We still got four hundred fifty-three. They match, so we know we did it correct. Another reason you might want to know all these different strategies is because it's a good way to check your answers. If you're not sure that your answer is correct, do it a different way. Do a different strategy, and if you get the same answer on both, then you're pretty confident you're doing it correct. All right, the last one. The last one is 439, take away 385, okay? We're going to start checking from the hundreds place down. You'll see why on this one, okay? Actually, you're, I'll do another example later and you'll really see why we're going to start from the hundreds and move down. 400, 300, that's fine. 30 and 80 is not okay, so we're going to regroup again. When we regroup, we're not taking one, we're taking 100 from the hundreds place and putting it with our 30, so this 30 becomes 130. We write 13 up there, but it's in the tens place, so we understand that we are worth counting by tens here, so it's 130, not just 13. Nine take away five is fine, so nothing to change. Nine minus five is four. 13 minus eight, we already know, is 50 or 5 and 3 minus 3 cancels out. You can put a 0 in front. I'm not going to, but I won't count off if you do. So we got 54. When we did it with our place value strategy on this same problem, we also got 54. So they match. So there's an example of all three methods that we're going to be working on in subtraction. So what were they again? You have place value strategy. This is remember where you um, separate your numbers by expanded form. You really get an understanding there that you're carrying 10 tens across or you're carrying 10 um, ones across. You understand that you're taking 10 with you. And then you have the add-on strategy, which is wonderful for those students who just can't get the borrowing. They keep messing up on their regrouping on subtraction. So if you're not good in subtraction, I really encourage you to do the add-on method because you don't have to subtract. You just keep adding to get your answer. And then the last one is what we're going to call the old school way, which is just your standard subtraction with marking and regrouping. But we want to be careful with that when we are regrouping and making sure that we're carrying what we're borrowing across our place value chart. All right, get that put in your notebook. Um, there were only two other pages I sent home to go in your notebook for subtraction, and that was your ladybugs. I'm not ready to do a video on that page yet, but if you want to go ahead and glue your mat in there, and you want to go ahead and look at it, um, on our picture, what we'll do is our base 10 blocks, number sentence, you'll just write your subtraction problem there, put your answer here, you can do your scratch work here if you'd like, and then you tell me how you solved it. Did you solve it with the add-on method? Did you solve it by um, expanded form place value strategy? Or did you just do the old school method where you marked down and borrowed and moved those tens across your place value chart? And then always make sure on your answer and word problem that we label it. I believe the question's asking about ladybugs, so our answer should be ladybugs. Now you also got your little um, circles that you can use to help you solve this problem. So right across another page, you can see I've already set it up. I have not worked it. This is just the first number. The 
The first number was 400, 20, and then three. And I'm gonna use this when, when I'm ready for us to work this page. I'll do another video and I'll show you how to mark out to show how you're regrouping in order to subtract. Um, you will have to regroup from your tens into your ones because I can already see that there's a bigger number in the ones place that will end up on bottom. Yeah, so there's a intro to subtraction and what you're gonna be seeing.